Chryso. GCSE maths can take you to some interesting places. I'd like to show you one because I want to show you the maths of video games. In particular, two things. Uh, maths to play video games well. It turns out mathematics is really useful in many video games to analyse your strategy well. I'll show you a little example of that. And maths is incredibly useful, in fact necessary, to build, create video games. Video game makers are using mathematics and not a lot of people seem to show you what that maths is. So I'm going to show you one tiny facet of one particular game uh, and why it helps you play it well, this maths, and also why understanding the maths is necessary to build the thing. And there are thousands more examples of this. So this game uh, is an old game now actually. It, well, it's been around a long time in various incarnations. First released in 1994. I used to play it in the late 90s as when I was a teenager. Uh, it got re-released big fanfare in 2012 and then there was next uh, the last incarnation was 2016. It's called XCOM. Uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown, UFO Enemy Unknown, uh, the latest one is called XCOM 2 and it's a strategic game where you're fighting off an alien invasion and uh, you have to take shots and shoot aliens uh, but also you're not doing it in real time so it's not how quick you move your mouse it's turn based so you have to make decisions every turn and then the computer takes its turn and it is interesting game i enjoy playing it and i want to show you the, the, the where the mass turns up in this and in fact i want to show you three things first of all why the maths helps you play it better. Secondly, uh, how to generalize that maths to provide a strategy guide. And thirdly, why the video game designers had to do the maths to make this a good game. So let's look at the game first and I wanna show you the problem we're gonna discuss in this. So here's the XCOM 2 game. Uh, in this particular version uh, of a mission, I'm trying to get my little character who's in here. This is, uh, this is Leon apparently. You see Leon skulking behind a, a few crates here to hide because Leon is trying to get into uh, a building over here. He's trying to rescue a, a buddy from in this building, which is shrouded in darkness at the moment. Uh, and it's raining and all that stuff. And it's a, it's a good looking game, even though it's quite a long time ago that it was made now. But the particular problem I have now is that I've dodged some of the guards who are floating around. Um, but there's a turret over here. It's in my way, which is not going to move. And I need to get past it. So I need to take it out. So this is a kind of shooty game, but it's very strategic. It's turn-based. It's not you don't have to sort of do it in real time, but you do have to make some decisions. And here's the decision I need to make. I could take a shot at this turret, and you can see from the data here and here that I've got an 80% chance to hit this shot. And for the rest of the discussion, I just want you to focus on. I just, I just want to guarantee I get a hit to land on this turret. 80% chance, pretty good. Although 20% chance that I'm going to miss, and that would be bad. Because I've upgraded this character though, I have another option, which is down here, it's called Rapid Fire, and that gives me two shots, but I get an aim penalty, so it's not going to be 80%, uh, it's going to be 65%. And you can see that the shot accuracy is reduced, this is modelling what happens in the real world if you try and take two shots, maybe your gun moves around. Uh, it's not being that clever, it's just very simply reducing the chance I have to hit, and it's reducing it by precisely 15%, but I do get two shots. So here's the basic question. Do I take one shot at 80% or do I take two shots at 65% chance to hit each time? And the goal I'm working on here for the moment to keep it simple is I just want to maximize the chance of hitting at least once. One shot, 80%, two shots at 65% each. What would you do? Why don't you pause the video now and have a discussion about this if you're in a situation where there's enough people to have a discussion about it and then restart when you're ready to talk about uh, which one you should do actually and find out why. Okay, I don't know which way you voted but let's find out what the math says you should do in this particular situation before we upgrade this to say actually what you should do in a general situation where it doesn't have to be an 80% chance to hit. Um, we should do some writing on this. The, the, the basic summary is that if you take a normal shot uh, there's no calculations to do, it's just 80%. So remember that, I'm going to write it as 0 0.8, that's the probability of hitting at least once. And that's all we're going to think about here. There are other things you might want to concern yourself with. Are you going to do enough damage? But for now, keep it simple. The chance of hitting at least once if you just take one shot and it was an 80% chance is 80%. Slightly patronizingly obvious. But the other situation is where we need to do some work. So this is called the rapid fire situation and you get two shots rapid fire and uh, let's write two shots there and each shot has a 0.65% sorry 0.65 chance 65% chance of hitting that's because they've reduced it by 15 percentage points but you do get two shots and I don't know which way you voted but when I've asked a lot of people doing the research for this video a lot of people say well, just take the normal shot 80% sounds better than 65% even though you get it twice let's find out if that's correct 
and you might have done some basic probability at GCSE Maths, it is part of GCSE Maths, this is a classic situation where using a tree diagram will help. You don't have to use it, you can do this without drawing a tree diagram, but I'm going to show you why a tree diagram helps here, because actually we've got two shots or two events and they happen one after the other. Uh, let's see what happens. So maybe uh, let's give myself some space here. Let's say the first shot, I'm going to write on the left here, and one of two things can happen, either you hit uh, or you miss. And I'm going to write hit and miss once, and I'm going to abbreviate it to H and M uh, without too much difficulty, I hope. The hit chance is 0.65, because you're doing this rapid fire thing, and it's simulating the fact that you have slightly less accuracy if you're going to try and shoot twice. It's a very simple simulation, but that's how this game is doing it. That means you have a 0.35 chance of missing, uh, if you've done the if I've done the calculation correctly, I think I have. And then I'm going to do a little tiny dotted line here because the second shot occurs, which you only get if you take this rapid fire thing. And you can, again, either hit or miss. Uh, and I'll do the same thing down here. If you missed first, you still either hit or miss. And this is the same probability for each of these branches as it was before. Actually, they're independent events, uh, which is why they're not changing. And I'm going to be able to multiply along these trees, or these tree branches, just like you do in a normal tree diagram. Uh, this is the second shot. So what do I care about here? For the, for the first situation, I just want to know the chance of hitting at least once. Um, I could hit twice here, but if there's only a tiny bit of health to remove on this turret, then all I care about is just landing a shot. And you can see that that would occur uh, in this outcome. There I've hit twice. In this outcome, I hit the first one. In this outcome, I've hit the second one. And it's only not going to happen in this outcome if I miss twice. So I could calculate these three, but to be honest, it's much easier to calculate this one and realize it's the opposite of that, the complement of that. So that's what I'm going to do. And luckily, I've done all the hard work already. I just need to sort of follow this branch down. The two chances that have to happen to go down that branch are 35% each. So it's 0 0.35 times 0 0.35, uh, which I should get a calculator to do for me. Because to be honest, these calculations are much easier with a calculator. 0 0.35 times 0 0.35 is 0 0.1225, 0 0.1225. But the thing I'm really worried about is not, I, I don't want to know the chance of my missing both shots. I want to chance, know the chance of hitting at least one of them, which is the complement, as I said. So it's one minus that, it's one minus 0 0.1225, which is, I think, 0 0.8775. And that's our headline figure. That's the chance of hitting at least one of the rapid fire shots. And I invite you to compare it if we scroll up to 0 0.8 here. Which one should you do? If you want to maximize the chance of hitting at least one shot, you'll have an 80% chance if you just take one shot. And with this situation, two shots at 65%, you have an 87.75% chance of hitting at least one. It looks like you should do the rapid fire, if that's all you care about. And well done if you voted that way. You want to see what happened? Of course you do. Here's what happened. We're spotted. Target disabled. Yay! Target disabled. So we've solved the question of what you should do in that context, but that's not the only thing that happens in the game. And to be honest, you don't really want to be doing this math live every time you're taking a shot in the game because life's too short. You're in the zone, you're playing the game. Actually, what would be good is if you could give someone some general strategy advice. When should you do a normal shot and when should you take a rapid fire shot? Because it will depend on your original shot chance. It's not always going to be an 80% chance to hit. If the target's further away, it's obviously, and the game models this, you get a lower percentage chance. If you're if they're behind decent cover, they can hide, you've got a lower chance to hit. Um, maybe they're really close and you get a higher percent chance to hit. So what advice would you give in all of the other options you have? This is where we don't want to do thousands of calculations for each possible option at the start. We want to do one general calculation. This is important in mathematics, the idea of generalizing. This is why we teach you algebra. Let's do the tree diagram again. Um, it's, as ever, uh, we've got two options, either normal shot, but this time I'm going to say the normal shot has an X percent chance to hit. And I'll just write chance to hit. Uh, we're going to use that in our next calculation because the rapid fire will work off that. You're going to get two shots. Write that down again. But this time it won't be an X chance each time. It will be an X minus 0.15 and that's the reduction the game program has built into the game we'll talk about why like i said in part three in a moment but let's do the tree diagram it's the same tree diagram and maybe i'll just do right first uh, and second again and it's going to be the same situation we're going to have first option either hit or a miss but this time the chance of hitting is x minus 0.15 
um, and the chance of missing is therefore one minus x minus 0.15, which is looks is messy, but it's true. I'm not even going to simplify that. I'm just going to roll with that for now. And then if you go off and here, the same thing happens. I'm not going to write the probabilities in because like last time, the thing I really care about is just down here. What's the chance of me missing both the shots? Because from that, I can get the chance of me hitting at least one. So it's following that route down the tree again. So it's going to be one minus x minus 0.15 squared. That's the chance of me missing both shots. Uh, and actually, in the end, I want the opposite of that, the complement of that. So I'm going to do another one minus. So the calculation I'm going for here is one minus the thing I just wrote down. And it looks like a bit of a mess. You have to take some algebraic guts to write that down. But there's been nothing hard to do. I haven't even done any expanding yet. I've just written down what happens. And now my algebra skills are going to kick in. I can solve this thing. But it's worth realizing that out there in the real world, they didn't have to make this question nice for an exam paper. It's just how the mechanic works in the game. Uh, I guarantee the video gamers designers did do these calculations to make sure it did what they wanted to do. Now, I'm going to do the algebra here. I'm going to expand this out, although you don't have to for what I'm about to do next. If you want to have a try at this yourself, feel free to pause the video, but I'm going to fast forward my algebraic skills and we'll see where we get to. So that is my answer. The answer to what? That that is the chance of me hitting at least one shot in general. If the chance I have to hit the original shot before I do the rapid fire is X. If I do the rapid fire, it'll be X minus 0.15 and I get two options. So that's the chance. It doesn't really tell me what to do, uh, but you've got to remember what I need to do is compare that algebraic outcome with the original algebraic outcome, the chance of hitting a normal shot, which was just X. So it's these two things. I want to know which is bigger to give me the best chance. And that's not obvious. Uh, I, th I think it's going to depend on X. And that's kind of the whole point. So let's look now about how I can figure out which one of these is bigger and when. So here is a GeoGebra window. Any graph plotting software is going to be useful here. And I guess it's maybe an obvious point, but if you're designing or playing a video game, you don't have to do it under exam conditions. You can use software like this. It's exactly like just using your calculator when you need to. And this is going to give us also a visual way of seeing what's going on. What I'm going to do is plot the two functions we come up with. One of them is very simple. It's the chance of you hitting uh, with a normal shot. And that's just x. It's just this variable. So if I plot the function x, uh, it's the line y equals x. So let's see what that looks like. There it is. Uh, well, this is um, let's make this a more obvious color. I'm going to make that a blue. Okay, so this is our normal shot chance. Now it's a probability. It should go between zero and one. So actually, let's just change this. Uh, there's a function command here to say go between zero and one. And then we've just got the, the line existing like that between zero and one it is the chance of you hitting your shot. What we really care about is the complicated one, the quadratic one, which is the chance of hitting at least one of the rapid fire shots if you do rapid fire. And I'm going to write that down. Let's call it g of x. Uh, in the original, I don't need to expand it out. I could just write down the original version before we did any of the algebra. So 1 minus, what was it? Uh, 1 minus brackets x minus 0.15. That's the 0.15 reduction. Uh, and that bit gets squared. And there you have it. And look, it's, it is a parabola, it's a quadratic, and it does cross the blue line, which means at some point, uh, is, is, this one, is this one red? I'm gonna make it red. I'm a little bit colorblind, so I'm never quite sure what I'm looking at. So let's just go with red, and then no one's gonna complain. Red one is rapid fire, blue for a normal shot. Uh, again, we've got a problem that is going beyond, that you don't get probabilities beyond one. So let's just limit this one in the same way as did last time. I'm just gonna write this as a function that goes between zero and one. And you can see that the red one is above the blue one, which is kind of what I wanted to know in, in, for certain values, but not always. So the first important point is that we did this for 80%. And you can see that at 0.8 here, uh, let's zoom in and make the most of this graph. At 0.8, 80% chance, you can see the red line is indeed above. And we calculated 0.8775, the chance there, which is about right here. And that's backing us up uh, at the 80% shot chance you should take rapid fire if all you care about is hitting at least one of them. And it looks like there's quite a large region uh, between this point here and this point here where the red curve is above the other one indicating you should take the rapid fire and if you want to know what those exact numbers are you could use graph plotting software and zoom in and out, or you could do some GCSE maths and solve the quadratic in fact I'm going to go do that really quickly uh, I'll do it on fast forward well, you, you're welcome to have a try at doing this before I do it if you want to pause the video now
So there you have it. If you solve this to find the intersections of those two graphs in exactly the same way as you solve an all quadratic, it's not a very nice quadratic. I use the quadratic formula, as you can see. You get 97%, uh, that's to the nearest percent, or 33%. And that's a relief because if we go back and look at the GeoGebra file, that is where these things cross over. It's at about 33 here, and it's about 97 here. And this has given us our general advice. If all you care about is the chance of hitting at least one of the shots, it looks like if you've got original shot chance of between 33% and 97% chance, then you'll have a better chance of hitting if you take the rapid fire. Uh, to be honest, that means you do the rapid fire every time. If you've got a character that's been upgraded to be able to have the rapid fire, this calculation is telling us it's almost always going to be better. If you have a shot chance of lower than 33% chance in the first place in the game, I think you probably should ask the question of whether you should run away rather than take the shot. Hey, but at least you know. The thing is, it didn't have to be that way. The game designer decided to make this curve be like it is by reducing the rapid fire chance by 15 percentage points. They could have done something different and we should look at what would happen if they did right so this is where using a piece of dynamic geometry software like GeoGebra, something which lets you plot the pictures and change them really comes into its own because i don't have to do all the calculations again all i need to do is change my original formula which had that 0 0.15 you you can see it there in it i want to change that number and so what i've done is i've made a little slider which at the moment doesn't do anything and this is going to be the amount the, the the video game designer could reduce the accuracy of the rapid fire shot to see what happens at the moment it's not doing anything because i haven't told it to use this r i just want you to see that this video this slider goes between zero and one uh, it, they designed it to be 15%. I'm going to leave it at 20 or 0.2, 20%, and change the original formula here to instead of reduce it by 0.15, we reduce it by R. And it's going to change the pictures that we drew like this. And there you go, that's the new function. Uh, and if I slide this around, you can see the red curve moves. Uh, it's actually just sliding it, things up and down here, but uh, Let's go back to the original, 0.15 was where we were there. That was the original curve we just had. If, say, the game designer had said, well, I think you should have a 20 percentage point reduction if you take rapid fire, it would have looked like this. And you can see that the, the bounds between uh, when you should take the rapid fire and the red curve is above the blue one are slightly tighter. Uh, but if they'd, this makes quite a lot of sense. If you make no penalty for having rapid fire, then the red curve is always above the blue curve and you should always do rapid fire. That's obvious because you're getting two shots instead of one shot and everything else is the same. But if you'd made the reduction really large, I don't know, maybe up to 30% here, then you see the red curve is never above the normal shot blue curve, which means you should probably never use rapid fire if all you care about is just landing one of the shots. And that would be a rubbish game because you've got this upgraded character with this skill called rapid fire and you basically never want to use it. So they had to choose carefully. If you make it too good rapid fire, you're always going to use it. There's no interesting decision to make. And if you make it too much of a penalty, you're never going to use it. And that's not an interesting game either. The games that you play are interesting if you have to make interesting decisions in how to play them. And they had to do the math to figure that out. So they've settled on 15, which you can see is sort of that sweet spot between. You don't always want to use rapid fire. Although to be honest, this graph tells me that you do kind of almost all the time, unless you've got a really rubbish chance or an absolutely guaranteed shot, in which case, I mean, that really happens. So actually my verdict here is that the game designers had to do the maths. This is a good game because they did the maths, but they could have done, in my opinion, something slightly better uh, because if they'd made the penalty, say, let's say it was 20, 20%. 20 this way, the curves are a little bit closer uh, and you can see you start being told by this curve to use rapid fire above about 50% and it sort of crosses off again here about, uh, I don't know, 89% or so or 91%, something like that. And I think this is slightly better. Maybe that makes this more strategic. The point is they had to think about this maths and actually we're solving a quadratic inequality. It's nice to do this in a graph plotting software where you can see it. To be honest, doing it by hand is what you have to do in the exam in order that you understand how to do it the nice and efficient way when you're outside in an exam situation. But there's a lot of maths going on here. Let me quickly summarize. I showed you basically there's a mathematical decision on should you take the shot or should you take rapid fire in any one circumstance do a tree diagram get the numbers right uh, if you do the algebraic version you can understand the advice in general you say well when should i take normal shot and when should i take rapid fire and then if you think backwards about how they designed it we had to use some math to figure out why they chose to reduce the shot um, 
accuracy by 15 percentage points it's because it's in the middle it's not too good and not too much of a penalty to make the game interesting and that's what makes a good video game it's not just the maths it's how the mathematical decisions affect the psychology of the player and if you don't think about both of them you're not going to make a good game so we've looked at the maths involved in a tiny facet of this particular video game, and it's the maths of the, the strategy. Should you take that shot or should you take the other option? And we've looked at how the video game designers had to think about their maths in order to make it a good game. Every video game, in fact, every game or anything you've, that's been created by people who are paying attention, they've probably done some mathematics to make it work well. And in this case, for games, it's important for them to have thought about the psychology of the decisions you have to make in playing the game, and they need the maths to do it. What I recommend if you want to do this sort of thing in the future, make or play video games, then just keep your eyes open. Have a look at your favorite video game and look or think about how mathematics would have been used to design the thing. And I guarantee you, even if it's not a turn-based strategy game, there's a lot of maths going on. Even the maths of how do you make things look good on computer graphics is seriously mathematical and a different sort of maths from what I've been talking about. But I hope you recognise that GCSE maths can take you to some interesting places. Uh, and actually, the, the things you'd study if you take maths a little bit further and look at it for A-level. In Wales, you have a choice to do an A-level in mathematics. There's also an A-level in further mathematics. And more of the skills that, that get taught in that course can get used a lot in video game design. I think you should also check out the other videos in the FMSP Wales series on interesting parts of GCSE Maths. You can also see videos of me building things in Jojoba quite often, like I did here uh, on my own channel on YouTube called Sparks Maths. But for now, I'll leave you till next time. So uh, good luck with the GCSEs. Uh, see you next time. Hoyle.